Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. We are from Group 8 and we are going to present about motivation across culture. My name is Nisuna Naziha and this is my group member. We have Atika, Katija and Azri. Nature of motivation. What is motivation? Motivation is basically a psychological process uh, through which the unsatisfied wants or needs lead to a drive that are aimed for goals and incentive or incentive. So motivating and rewarding Diverse workforce is a is a significant challenge to organization itself. Organizations itself, and employee preferences are basically correlated with the culture. Managers also must be aware that a reward in one culture may be viewed differently in another. In other culture, like in this culture, maybe they value more on the best the on the individual basis, but on other culture develop more on the group based reward. Managers also also tend to focus more on extrinsic rewards and sometimes they kind of ignore the intrinsic rewards. This is because extrinsic basically is about the external environment, but intrinsic is more on your own self. So we have basic motivation processes. There are three elements in the basic motivation processes which is indeed the drive and attainment of goal. So we have intrinsics and extrinsics. What if intrinsics and extrinsics we may ask? Uh, so intrinsic is basically the individual experiences, uh, the fulfillment by carrying out an activities and helping others. For example, you felt a sense of uh, fulfillment when you see the progress of your work in front in, in front of your eyes. So we have extrinsics. So extrinsics is basically the external environment, and it is the result of the greater are of it of the activities are of greater importance due to the competition and the composition, or the incentive plan itself. For example, completing the work given given for money and salary. We have universalist assumption. The first in the first assumption that they made is basically the motivation process is universal. And this is best when they assume that all people are motivated to pursue goals that they value. This is what the motivation doors called goals, high values, and preferences. Culture, culture influences the specific content of the, and the goals pursued. And the specific needs and goals can be different between the two cultures. For example, what analysis suggests that the key incentive for many U.S. workers are basically money. For Japanese employees, it is respect and power. For Latin American workers, it is an array of factors, including family consideration, respect, job status, and the good personal life. Similarly, the primary interest for the U.S. workers is basically on the individual interest, uh, individual interested in interest. And for Japanese workers, it's always about the group interest. And for in America, it's not about their own self, but more on their uh, employers. Simply put, motivation is universal. But uh, specific nature, it differs across the culture. So no one's motivation theories can be universally applied across the culture. So next, we have assumption of content and process. The second starting assumption is that the work motivation theories can be broken down into two general content categories, which is content and process. What is content theories? Content theories explain work motivation in terms of what arouses, energizes, or initiates the employee behavior. Content theories, uh, content theories has been used by the most research in international human resource management because these theories it is mean the motivation in more general terms and are more useful in creating the composite uh, picture of employee motivation in a particular country or region. Next is the process story. Process story explain work explain work motivation by how employee behavior is is initiate, initiated, redirected, and halted. It is more sophisticated and focused more on individual behavior in specific settings. Thus, it have less value to study to the studies of employee in the international settings, although there also has been some research in this area as well. The, but by far, all the, all the uh, research findings are more on the content theories, but for in, in this chapter particularly, 
uh, it examines, well, it examines research findings that by exploring both content and process stories. Okay, so moving on to the hierarchy of needs theory. The hierarchy of needs theory is based primarily on work by Abraham Maslow, a well-known humanistic psychologist. Maslow's hierarchy of need has received a great deal of attention in the U.S. management and organizational behavior field and from international management researchers who have attempted to show its value in understanding employee motivation throughout the world. Maslow postulated that everyone has five basic needs that constitute a need hierarchy in ascending order, beginning with the most basic need and going up to the highest. They are physiological, safety, social, esteem and self-actualization needs. Figure 12 to 2 illustrated this hierarchy. So, the first one is physiological needs. Physiological needs are basic physical needs for water, food, clothes, and shelter. Maslow contended that an individual's drive to satisfy these physiological needs is greater than the drive to satisfy any other type of need. In the context of work motivation, these physiological needs often are satisfied through the wages and salaries paid by the organization. So, for, uh, for the second need is safety needs. Safety needs is desires for security, stability and the absence of pain. Organizations typically help personnel to satisfy these needs through safety programs and equipment, also providing security through medical insurance, unemployment and retirement plans, also similar benefits. Next is social needs. Social needs are desires to interact and affiliate with others and the need to feel wanted by others. These needs can be satisfied not only in formally assigned work groups but also in informal groups. Example is love, affection, family, friends and relationship. Next is esteem needs. Esteem needs is the need for power and status to feel important and receive recognition from others. Promotions, awards and feedback from the boss lead to feelings of self-confidence. The example of esteem needs is self-confidence, achievement, recognition and accomplishment. So, the uh, last theory, the last needs in Maslow theory is self-actualization needs. Self-actualization needs are the desires to reach one's full potential to become everything that one is capable of becoming human being. This level of needs pertains to what a person's full potential is and realizing that potential. Maslow describes this as the desire to become everything that one is capable of becoming. Example is realizing personal potential self-fulfillment, pursue talent, and creativity. Moving on to the next slide, which is international findings on Maslow's theory. Harry Group's study indicated that all needs are important to respondents across cultures, which is upper level needs were particular importance to international managers. Respondents reported that autonomy and self-actualization were the most important and least satisfied needs. And the results showed that all needs were important to the respondents across the cultures. Some researchers have suggested that Maslow's hierarchy is too Western and a more collectivist. Eastern perspective is necessary. So, Nevis believes that the Maslow hierarchy reflects a culture that is Western-oriented and focused on the inner needs of individuals. Obviously, not all cultures function in this way. 
ASEAN cultures emphasize the needs of society. So, Neville suggested that a Chinese hierarchy of needs would have four levels which from lowest to highest would be first belonging which is social and then second is physiological, third safety and the last is self-actualization as seen in the figure 12 to 3. If this is true, MNCs attempting to do business in China must consider this revised hierarchy and determine how they can modify their compensation and job design programs to accommodate the requisite motivational needs. In any event, Nevis' idea is worth considering because it forces the multinational firm to address work motivation based on those culture cultural factors that are unique to its surroundings as opposed to a universal approach. So you can refer the figure 12 to 3 on the top of my slide which is this is the hierarchy the Chinese need hierarchy that have four so, needs. The two factors of theory of motivation uh, a theory that identifies two set of factors that influence job satisfaction, hygiene factor and motivators. So basically, the two basic type of question is when did you feel particularly about good about your job? And then when did you feel exceptionally bad about your job? So the motivators in the two-factor motivation Theory, job content factors such as achievement, recognition, responsibility, advancement, and the work itself. And the hygiene factor. In the two-factor motivation theory, job content variable such as salary, interpersonal relation, technical supervision, working condition, and company policy and administration. Okay, the two-factor theory holds that motivators and hygiene factor relate to, com to employee satisfaction. This relationship is more complex than the traditional view that employees are either satisfied or dissatisfied. According to the factor, according to the two-factor, if hygiene factor are not taken care of or are deficient, there will be dissatisfaction. However, if hygiene factor are taken care of, they may, they may, may be no dissatisfaction, but they also may no satisfaction. Only when motivators are present well will there be satisfaction. In short, hygiene factor help prevent dissatisfaction, but in motivators lead to satisfaction. Okay. Therefore, according to this theory, if effort to motivate human resource must provide recognition, a change to achieve and grow, advancement and interesting work. Okay, next we move to the international finding on Herzberg theory. International finding related to the two-factor theory fall into two categories. Uh, the consists of repli replication of Herzberg research in particular country. In the other category are cross-culture studies that focus on job satisfaction. Okay, what is two factors uh, replication? First is uh, a number of research effort have been undertaken to re replicate the two factor theory. And in the main, the support Herzberg finding. George Hines, for example, okay. Survey 218 uh, middle manager and 196 salaries employees in New Zealand using rate of 12 job factor and overall job satisfaction. Based on this finding, he concluded that the Herzberg model appeared to have validity across occupational level. Another similar study was conducted among 178 managers in Greece who were Greek uh, nation, nationals. Overall, this study found that Herzberg two-factor theory of job satisfaction generally held true for this manager. Okay, based on another study test, 
in an Israeli kibbutz, motivators that tend to be source of satisfaction and hygiene factor, source of dissatisfaction. Although interpersonal relation were regarded more as a source of satisfaction than of dissatisfaction, the researcher was ex was careful to explain this finding as a result of the te- of the unique nature of a kibbutz. International relation of a work and non-work n- nature are not clearly defined, uh, thus making difficult to the separation of this factor on a motivator's hygiene basis. So, these two was commenting on the result that researchers noted that the finding of the study support Herzberg's two-factor of hypothesis. Satisfaction arises from the nature of the work itself, while the satisfaction have to do with the condition surrounding the work. Okay, we move to the next point is cross-culture job satisfaction studies. Uh, this is a, a number of cross-culture studies related to job satisfaction also have been conducted in the recent year. This comparison shows the Herzberg type motivator tend to be more important of job satisfaction than uh, hygiene factor. So, uh, basically more comprehensive study of managerial jobs attitude investigate the type of job outcome that are desired by managers in different culture. Data were gathered from lower and middle management, personnel who were attending management development course in several countries. The researcher sought to identify the importance of 15 job related outcome and how satisfied the respondent were with each. The result indicate that job content is more important than job context. So, job context factor. What is job context factor? Job context is uh, in work motivation. Does factor controlled by the organization such as a condition of the work, how hours that you work, earning that you get after the work, security, benefit and promotion that you get when you do the something in work in work so what is job contact job content factor job content factor is a in work motivation that does factors internally control such as responsibility achievement and the work itself like like for for you as a as a employees you know what you want to do and what your task, what your responsibility to do that with your work. Okay, manager from these four countries differ significantly regarding both the perceived importance of job outcome. These different are useful in shedding light on what motivate managers in this country. The MNC in developing country specific human resource management approach to conclusion in summary Herzberg to factor theory appear the reinforcement Maslow need hierarchy through its research support in the international area as with the application of a country by country or region basic regional basics although these are exceptions such as France. There seems to be little doubt that job content, fa- job content factors are more important than job context factor in motivating not only managers but also lower level employees around the world, as Hoss State pointed out. Okay, next we move to the achievement motivation theory. Achievement motivation theory is a theory that holds that individual can have a need to get ahead, to attain success and to sh- reach objective. In the United States, where entrepreneurial ex- effort is encouraged and individual success promoted, the probability is higher than there will be a greater percentage of people with high needs of for achievement. 
in China, Russia or Eastern European country where cultural value have not traditionally supported individual entrepreneurial effort. These people like situation in which they take personal responsibility for finding solution to problem. They want to win because of their own effort, not because of luck or chance. They tend to be moderate risk taker rather than high or low risk taker. If a decision making situation appears to be too risky, they will learn as much as they can about the environment and try to reduce the probability of failure. They turn a high risk situation into a moderate risk situation. If the situation is too low risk, however, there usually is a accompanying low reward and they tend to avoid situation with insufficient incentive. So next, the background motivation theory. Uh, it's a higher achievers that want con concert feedback on their performance. They like to know how well they are doing and they use this information to modify their action. High achievers tend to gravitate into vocations such as sales which provide them with immediate objective feedback about how they are doing. This has consider considerable implication for human resource management. High achieve achievers often tend to be loners and not team players. Then they do not form warm close relationship and they have little empathy for others problem. This last characteristic may distract from their effectiveness as manager of people. Okay, now is um, achievement motivation theory international finding. That is a Polish industrialist found that many of them were high achievers. The average high achievement score was 6.58 quite close to US managers average score. In later studies, researchers did not find a high need for achievement in Central European country. For example, survey chess industrial manager found that the average high achievement score was 3.32. A number of years ago, Mac McClellan was able to demonstrate the success of such as achievement motivation training. For example, in India, he conducts such as program with considerable success. Uh, the continue of achievement motivation theory international finding. In following up these Indian trainings, over the subsequent six to ten months, he found the two third were usual unusually active in achievement oriented activities. They had start their business their, they had started new business, investigated new product lines, increased profit or expanded their present organization. In example, the owner of a small radio store opened a paint and varnish factory. After completing the program, McClellan concluded that this training appeared to have doubled the natural rate of unusual achievement achievement oriented activity in the group study. If international human resource managers cannot charge cannot change the situation or train the participant, then they must adjust to be more specific condition to the country and formulate a motivation strategy that is based on that condition. Okay, next uh, select process theories these process theories can also lead to better understanding, just like content theories. These theories explains on how employee behavior is initiated, redirected, and halted. Some of the theory have been used to examine motivation in the international area. Among the most widely recognized, uh, recognized process theories is equity theory, goal setting theory, and expectancy theory. First, equity theory. Equity theory focuses on how motivation is affected by people's perception of how fairly they are being treated. 
This theory is supported in the West but has mixed results internationally. The theory holds that if people perceive that they are being treated equitably, this perception will have a positive effect on their job performance and satisfaction. And there is no need to strive for equity. Conversely, if they believe they are not being treated fairly, especially in relation to relevant others, they will be dissatisfied and this belief will have a negative effect on their job performance and they will strive to restore equity. In this setting, everyone was treated the same but the managers was reported lower satisfaction levels than the workers. The managers perceived their contributions to the to be greater than those of any other group in the kibbutz. As a result of this perception, they felt that they were undercompensated for their value and effort. These findings support the basic concept of equity theory. However, in Asia and the Middle East, the employees often readily accept inequitable treatment in order to preserve group harmony. Additionally, in countries such as Japan and Korea, men and women typically receive different pay for doing the same work. Yet, because of years of cultural conditioning, women may not feel like they are being treated inequitably. And some researchers have explained this finding by suggesting that these women compare themselves only to other women and in this comparison feel like they are being treated equitably. While this may be true, the results still point to the fact that equity theory is not universally applicable in explaining motivation and job satisfaction. In short, although the theory may help explain why equal pay for equal work is a guiding motivation principle in countries such as United States and Canada, it may have limited value in other areas of the world, including Asia and Latin America. Next theory is goal setting theory. Goal setting theory focuses on how individuals go about setting goals and responding to them and the overall impact of this process on motivation. Specific areas that are given it attention in this goal setting theory include the level of participation in setting goal, goal difficulty, goal specificity and the importance of objective, timely feedback to progress towards goals. Unlike many theories of motivation, goal setting theory has been continually refined and developed. There is considerable research evidence showing that employees perform extremely well when they are assigned specific and challenging goals that they have had a hand in setting. But most of these studies have been conducted in the US while few of them have been carried out in other countries. So in Norwegian and UK, the employees shun participation and prefer to have their own representative work with management to determining work goals. Unlike the United States, employees' participation in setting goals is motivational. Meanwhile, in ASEAN and Latin work groups where collectivism is very high. So, the last theory is expectancy theory. Expectancy theory postulates that motivation is largely influenced by a multiplicative combi combination of a person's belief that effort will lead to performance, performance will lead to specific outcomes and the outcomes will be the value to some individuals. This theory predicts that high performance followed by high rewards will lead to high satisfaction. On the other hand, it is important to remember that expectancy theory is based on employees having considerable control over their environment and a condition that does not exist in many cultures. 
in particular in societies where people believe that much of what happens is beyond their control and this theory may have less value it would seem like that expectancy theory is the best able to explain worker motivation in cultures where there is a strong internal locus of of control in short the theory seems culture bound and international managers must be aware of this limitation in their efforts to apply this theory to motivate human resources this kadija and i will explaining to you guys about motivation apply job design work centrality and rewards Content and process theory provide important insight into understanding of ways to motivate human resource in international management. So, this concept apply to job design with centrality and rewards. So, what is job design? Job design is job content, the method that are used on the job and the way the job relates to other job in the organization. Job design typically is a function of the work to be done and the way in which management one is to be carried out. Hence, explain why the same type of work may have different impact on the motivation of human resource in various parts of the world. QWL or quality of work life is not same throughout the world, which means that um, assembly line employee in Japan work at a rapid pace for hours and have a very little control over their work activities. Meanwhile, in Sweden, assembly line employees work at a more relaxed pace and have a great deal of control over their work activities. Moreover, US assembly line employee typically work somewhere between at a pace less demanding than Japan but more structured than Sweden. QWS is directly related to the culture. In Table 12.7, um, you'll find a comparison between United States, Japan, and Sweden along the four cultural dimension, which already discussed in Chapter 4. In this table shows that each country has a different cultural profile, where explain why similar job may be designed quite differently from country to country. Okay, from Table 12.7, um, I will compare to you about Japan and Sweden in terms of cultural dimension. So, as you can see, uh, under uncertainty avoidance in Japan have a strong uncertainty avoidance. This is because Japanese like to structure tasks, so there is no doubt regarding what is to be done and how to do. Well, in Sweden, the, the uncertainty avoidance is very low uh, because the job description, policy manual and similar work related material are more open-ended. And for individualism, in Japan is very low because there is a strong emphasis on security and individual risk taking is discouraged. While in Sweden, it's moderate to high degree of individualism, which reflected in their emphasis on individual decision making. For power distance index, Japan has very high in power distance index. This is because Japanese workers are are accustomed to taking order from those above them. While Sweden, they have weak power distance index, meaning that Swedish manager use participative approach in leading their people. While in masculinity index, in Japan is very high. It shows that they put a great deal of importance of money and other material symbol of success. While in Sweden, there are low masculinity, which means that the interpersonal relation and the ability to interact with other workers and discuss job-related matters are important. All job design tend to reflect the cultural value of the country. The challenge for MNC is to adjust job design to meet the needs of the host country culture, such as Japanese firm enter the United States. They're often surprised to learn that people recent close control in fact, there is evidence that the most profitable Japanese-owned company in the United States are those that delegate a high degree of authority to their U.S. manager. Next, social technical job design. The job design that blend personal and technology. The objective is to integrate new technology into the workplace so that workers accept and use it to increase overall productivity. The new technology often requires people to learn new methods and in some cases, work faster. 
The employer is in is common. So effective social technical design can overcome this problem. For example, uh, the Swedish automaker company, which is Volvo, have used this. And some firms introduce social technical design for better blending of personal and technology without sacrificing efficiency, such as uh, General Food, a well-known US company. While for MNC, the challenge will be made uh, the fit between the design and the culture. Next is work centrality, where the importance of work in, in, in an individual's life relative to other areas of internet provide important insight into how to motivate human resources in different cultures. For example, Japan has the highest level of work centrality, Israel has moderately high level, while US and Belgium have average level. Meanwhile, the Netherlands and Germany have moderately low level, and lastly, Britain has low level. Next, value of work. Work is an important part of the lifestyle of most people. This emphasized can be attributed to a variety of conditions. American and Japanese work long hours because of the cost of living is high in their country. Most Japanese managers expect salary employees who aren't paid extra to stay late at work, where overtime has become a requirement of the job. Recent evidence is this that Japanese workers may do far less work in business day than outside the would suspect. In Japan, one third of the working age population suffer from chronic fatigue, which is Karoshi, overwork or job burnout, is not recognized as a real social problem in Japan. Many Japanese people commit suicide because of Karoshi, because they are too tired. Some people that only slept for 4 hours in a week. Furthermore, job satisfaction. Value of work has for motivating human resources across culture. Another interesting contrast is job satisfaction. For example, Japanese office workers may be much less satisfied with their job than their US, Canada, and Euro counterpart are. The Americans were pleased with the job challenge, opportunity for teamwork, and ability to make a significant contribution at work. However, Japanese workers were least pleased with these three factors. Moreover, motivation are job attitude toward quality of life. For example, Euro workers see a strong relationship between how well they do their job and ability to get what they want out of life. Meanwhile, Japanese workers were least likely to see any connection. So, the question is, how Japanese firm will be able to have effective strategy alliance with American and European companies if the work value of the partner are so different? So. Fujikiku suggests that what he called a balance in the synergy between the partners. Okay, so all of these are suggestions from Fujikiku uh, where it's balance in the synergy. So he suggests uh, moving away from logical and reason centered individualistic thinking to moving forward a more holistic, idealistic, and group thinking approach to problem solving, and from viewing work as a necessary, necessary burden to viewing work as a challenging and development activity. And from avoiding of risk, taking and the feeling of distrust of others, to emphasize on cooperation, trust, and personal concern for others. From the habit of analyzing things in such great depth that in result in paralysis through analysis, cooperation built on institution and pragmatism. From emphasize on control to an emphasize of flexibility. In conclusion, work is important in every society, but the extent of, of importance varies. And lastly, reward system. Reward system used to motivate personnel. Some reward are financial in nature, such as salary raise, bonus, and stock option. Other are non-financial, such as feedback and recognition. One of the major challenges for international managers is that significant difference between the reward system that work best in one country and those are, that are most effective in another. However, some of these differences are a result of competitive environment or of government legislation that dictated such as minimum wages and pension. For the differences are account by culture. For example, American companies like to use merit-based reward system, while in Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, where individualism is not very high, so often feel that 
This form of reward system is too disruptive of the corporate culture and incentive and culture. Uh, there's uh, the use of financial incentive in in order to motivate employees is a common practice across the countries, especially when it comes to a country that high in individualism. Take U.S. for example. There has been a severe chief executive that earned more than one hundred million dollars per year thanks to the bonuses, uh, stock option, and long-term uh, incentive payments. This is also due to the uh, companies try to link the uh, composition with the performance of the employees. And the system are also rank, rich from the individual basis in which the employees earn employees are paid directly for their performance to which the two individuals earn bonuses based on how well the company perform. Uh, also, in many cultures, uh, composition is based on a group membership or the group effort itself, and the system are designed to stress equality and, and employees will oppose the use of individual incentive plans. For example, as reported by Vance and Associates, there was an Indonesian oil workers who rejected the pay for performance uh, system uh, that would have resulted in some of their work team earn more than the others. And while financial rewards such as pay bonuses and stock options are important motivators, in many countries, workers are highly motivated by other things as well. For example, Sirada and Greenwood studied the employees of a large multinational electrical equipment manufacturer with operation in 40 different countries. They have found out that, that in all of these accounts, the most important rewards involve recognition and achievement. And the second importance for, for, the, locals are best, for the locals is basically the uh, work environment and the employment condition, conditions such as pay and um, working hours. There also has been some <clears throat> differences that emerge when it comes to the preferred type of reward. For example, for French and Italy workers, they, they highly value the um, job security. Job security and, com and for American and British workers, it held, le it held a little less importance for them. Very simply, uh, the reward system that deemed important are appeared to be are appeared to be culturally influenced, and that brings us to our next slide, which is culture. So, culture culture can affect the overall cost of an incentive system. For example, which uh, for culture. Culture can affect the overall cost of incentive system. Uh, in Japan, for example, uh, there has been an effort to introduce the locales to the Western style merit pay system, but it led to the increase in labor costs. This is due to the company seems to be unable to reduce the salary of the less productive workers, and it has resulted in the Salaries of the all the employees increased. Increased. Um. Also. Also, there has been a. There also has been a study by NAM, uh, on the two current banks. They were put under two different management system. Uh, and both of them are owned and operated as a joint venture by the by an American and Japan and the Japanese banks respectively. On the American side they were put into the uh, management process and the personal policies that are common to their organizations. But on the Japanese side uh, they try to blend in the um, they try to blend in the Japanese and Korean humorous management policies. And as a result, now found out that on the Japanese side, they are more committed to their organizations 
organizations compared to their um, American counterparts. Also, um, the, the reward system or incentive system can be transferred or used successfully. For example, Welsh returns and summer examine the effectiveness of common restaurant incentive system in the Russian textile factory. They have found out that the um, both contingently administered extrinsic uh, rewards and uh, positive recognition and attention from the supervisor led to a significantly uh, enhanced job performance. While the participative techniques had a little impact on job behavior and performance. Similarly, many people believe that the large annual financial uh, packages and lucrative uh, golden parachutes are used only in American firms, but this is untrue. Senior level managers in many MNCs now earn the large salaries and the large financial packages for executives who are terminated terminated or whose company is acquired by another firm, they are gaining in popularity, for, especially in Europe. In other words, uh, types of, uh, in other words, type of rewards that are used is not culturally bound. Culture also can, can influence the effect, the effectiveness of the, of the various rewards. What works in one country may not work in another. Uh, for example, research shows that the Swedish workers with a superior performance often prefer a reward of time off rather than the additional money, while high-performing Japanese workers tend to opt for the financial incentive as long as they are group-based and not individual basis. It is also important to realize that, that the reason why the workers choose, uh, choose the form of motivation over another, for example, they off rather than more money, uh, may not be immediately obvious or intuitively discriminable. Uh, for example, for workers in um, for workers in French and Germany, they tend to take all of their entitled holidays compared to Japanese workers who only take half of their entitled holidays. And this is, and many people believe this is because the Japanese workers want to earn more money, but this is not the real cases. The real reason is basically, um, the Japanese, for Japanese workers, it, for them, they think if they took all the holidays that are the entitled for, that they are entitled for, it shows that there are lack, there are lack of commitment for their companies. So this is also because they in their culture they practices karoshi and which also can trans be translated as the overwork and this this is also the this is basically the reason why they don't they don't really take lots of holidays um uh, among across their working years uh working years and yeah basically that's it from us. Thank you. Okay.